with Alzone for 4 for 4 Science, where we discuss four science topics in just four minutes, and we make it almost as entertaining as Bill Nye. Almost. Sure, there's beer made from belly button lint, but now San Francisco fog is being made into vodka. Sophie, will you be having your fog martini shaken or stirred? I would love to have a fog <laughs> martini. This is really cool because fog is made up of water vapor. And so when you catch it with something called a fog catcher, you can harvest this water vapor from the air and use it for things like making vodka. So in this case, Hangar 1 uh, is making a vodka. What they did was they gathered the water and then they boiled it and they ran it through a filter to make sure it was clean. Mm -hmm. And they used this fog as the basis of a special a limited edition run of vodka. I think they're only making 2,400 bottles, but they're going to be $125 a bottle. Yeah, it's pretty pricey. Yeah, the cost is a bit prohibitive for me. I think I'll be going with the belly button beer, <laughs> but, you know. But that said, like the whole idea that the, one of the key technologies used in this was a fog catcher. Mm -hmm. I just love that, you know, that there were kind of eight of these things set up near the Sutro town in, ta in San Francisco. And they were basically collecting that moisture. So it wasn't a huge amount that they collected. I think it was about 1,200 litres over a period mm -hmm. of five months. But as Sophie says, there could be a lot of potential for this in other areas. Sarah? You know, I, I think the technology here is pretty interesting, but I also think that there could probably be a better use than It's a little, it's a little kitschy. A lot of stuff going on in the alcohol market that's really kitschy. India has performed a successful space shuttle test launch. Are they now our new competition for space exploration, or do they still have a ways to go, James? I think, you know, India needs a lot of praise for what it's been doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as you say... We had a, earlier this week, we had a successful test launch for space shuttle technology. They're going to do some more over the coming years. But the key thing with India is that they're doing a lot of these space launches at quite low cost, and mm -hmm. they're making very, very good use of technology. They earned a lot of, right, correctly earned a lot of praise for the Mars orbiter a few years ago. So they really need to be watched. Yeah. Yeah, we're used to looking at really expensive, almost extravagant space proposals here with NASA wanting to go to Mars and with SpaceX building these reusable rockets. But at the same time, a program that's much less expensive, like India's, can still accomplish really impressive things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think this, it's um, it's exciting to see India build out their space program. So, like James mentioned, they have sent a spacecraft to Mars. They've also done a mission to the moon. So, I'm I'm excited to see what they're going to do next. And in terms of this actual shuttle, it was made to scale. So, can you explain that a little bit, James? So, yeah, I mean, obviously, they're, they're not sending a full-size space shuttle up mm -hmm. yet, and kind of like it went up and kind of like you know it separated from this rocket, came back down again. So, the first of many tests. While your underarm marks on your t-shirt may be a good way to gauge your sweat, it's certainly not accurate, so now there's a small flexible patch that will monitor your sweat. Why do we need to know so much about why we perspire? Well, this device is really cool. It monitors both what's in your sweat and what your heart rate is while you're wearing it. It fits right about here, sticks to the skin, and is flexible. Mm -hmm. And so, for example, uh, when you're running and you're working out hard, you're, you sweat out a chemical called lactate. And this device can pick that up, and so it can tell, ah, this person is now working out hard. And at the same time, it can say, oh, what's their heart rate while the lactate is being expressed? And oh. so you can learn a little bit about the person. So I think that the key thing that's going to develop this is going to be the involvement of a lot of the gadget makers. Like, I've read that Samsung has been involved in this. But, you know, we've kind of seen, like, the, the expansion of Fitbit and everything in recent years. If this can be worked into that whole kind of industry that's growing now, I think it can do really well, and I think it will take off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Sophie mentioned that the device measures lactate, but there are a lot of other compounds in sweat that can tell you about what's going on inside your body. So you could look at electrolyte levels to get info about hydration. You can also measure blood glucose levels through sweat and even drug use. My issue with wearable tech is that are we becoming too overly familiar with our bodies? Are we going to be encouraging some sort of hypochondria at a certain point if you're like, oh my goodness, my electrolytes are down, what should I do? Da, 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 da. Do I need to go get an insulin pump? I just think that we're going down a road where we're no longer just living at all. <laughs> we're monitoring. Forget an acids, a foldable robot that you can swallow can help your tummy. Sarah, would you try this new medical technology? <laughs> well, this is really cool. So this is a proposal from a team at MIT. It hasn't been tested in humans, but the idea is you swallow this really tiny robot, mm -hmm. it unfolds in your stomach, and it could patch up a wound, it could help remove a foreign body, and it's actually biodegradable. In this case, they use pig intestines, mm -hmm. so when it's done, it just breaks down and goes away. I feel like I saw a sci-fi movie on this technology when I was a kid. It's just so amazing. Yeah. Based on origami, kind of biodegradable. I, I don't know what there isn't to like about it. I mean, I wouldn't want to be the first person to have this tested no. on me, but I do think it's an amazing step and forward. And they are planning on testing on animals and humans in the future.
It's great because we're used to thinking about robots as these metal machines, but if you want a machine that interacts well with people, you want it to be soft. So soft robotics is this field where researchers are making robots out of gel, out of paper, they're using origami, and now they're making robots out of meat. I think it's a really cool area to explore. I'm wondering if anyone who's vegan and in desperate need of, of has like an ulcer or something is going to say, no, they can't possibly use this technology. But they have about six to eight years to really consider it before it will ever hit the marketplace. Now, you know, we think, tell us what you think using the hashtag 444science.